Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a quick summary of most of the information we've covered throughout this building atoms section. So the first thing we talked about in this whole unit was Dmitry Mendeleev and his original periodic table. He was the first person to ever try and actually put an organization to the elements and the way he did that was arranging them by increasing atomic mass. So all the elements he put in order based on their atomic mass. Uh, about 50 years after that, this other scientist named Henry Moseley, he noticed something else in this arrangement. He said that the atoms of each element actually increase by one proton as you move across the periodic table. So an example of this uh, is, uh, so we have hydrogen down here. Hydrogen has one proton. Helium has two protons. Lithium has three protons. These are the first three elements on the periodic table. So when I go from the first to the second, I increase by one proton. When I go from the second to the third, I increase by one proton. And so that was something that Mosley recognized and something that was really, really important to us today as we examine the periodic table. Uh, the next thing we looked at was the individual elements boxes all together. And so the first thing we, we noticed and titled was this thing called the atomic number. The atomic number we found at the top of the box for the element, and we said that it's equal to the number of protons. All right, so the atomic number of the atom is equal to the number of protons in the nucleus of that element. Uh, so just like Mosley said, the periodic table is arranged in order by atomic number, and so the, the protons here and the atomic number increase as we go from element to element. So magnesium happens to be the twelfth element on the periodic table. For a neutral atom, which is an atom that has no charge, we also see that the atomic number tells us the amount of electrons in the atom. And the reason is, so I say that, okay, the atomic number for magnesium is 12. That means I have 12 positive protons. I'll put a little plus sign here. If the atom is neutral, that means that the charge has to be zero overall. So in order to get rid of my 12 positive charges, I have to have 12 negative charges. And when I do the addition here, then that would cancel out to zero. So the atomic number for a neutral atom will communicate both the protons and the electrons because they need to cancel each other out. We then looked at these two things called mass number and average atomic mass, and they have these names that sound kind of similar, but they're two very unique things. So uh, this relates back to our chart when we discussed each of the subatomic particles, and we said the mass of a proton is one AMU, one atomic mass unit. We also said the mass of a neutron is one atomic mass unit. And then we said the electrons are these really, really tiny things, and so the masses of them are so small that they're insignificant. They don't count towards anything, and so we just say that the mass of an electron is about zero. So when I try and find the overall mass of the atom, or the mass number, right, I need to add up the masses of the protons and the neutrons. Since the electrons don't count as anything, they don't really matter. So the mass number is the number of protons, plus the number of neutrons. So, for example, we have this element lithium down here. So this is just a single atom of lithium. It has an atomic number of three, which tells us that it has three protons. And since it's uh, a neutral atom, then there's three protons, three electrons. We're also given that it has four neutrons. So when I go to find the mass number, I need to take the number of protons, which is three and I add the number of neutrons, which is four, and I get a mass number of seven, because three plus four gives me seven. That's how I calculate mass number. When I look at the average atomic mass, for our intents and purposes right now, we only want to identify where to find it. So the average atomic mass is found at the bottom of an element's box on the periodic table. And so we can compare those a little bit later, and we'll actually show you how to calculate this number at a later time. The next step in our process was to fill in some of these tables to predict these missing parts. And this helps us to practice you know, calculating average atomic mass or calculating the mass number, or finding out the protons and all that. So we're gonna walk through these three examples together pretty quickly. 
So for the first one, we have this element carbon. All right, so carbon has a symbol C down here, and so the symbol for carbon would be C. The atomic number for carbon comes from the top of the box here, and so the atomic number for carbon happens to be 6. We know that the atomic number also tells us the number of protons, and that the protons and electrons need to be equal for the atom to be neutral. So if there's 6 positive protons, there need to be 6 negative electrons. To get the mass number, we added the protons, 6, and the neutrons, 8, and we got 14. And then the average atomic mass, all we do is we look down at the bottom of the carbon atom, we see it's 12.01. I'll round it off. 12.01. So that's the first one. The next one looks a little bit different. We want to look at this Na. Well, Na, if we pull up the box from the periodic table, is sodium. And so I'm going to write the element's name here, sodium. We know that its symbol is Na, and the atomic number is at the top again, so that's an 11. Remember, the atomic number tells us the number of protons, so this atom has 11 protons. And then, since the protons and electrons cancel each other out, there's also 11 electrons. We're not given the neutrons this time, and so this is kind of the thing we have to figure out. But we do know that the mass number is 23. Now remember that the mass number is protons plus neutrons. So I know that the protons are 11. 11 plus what is going to give me a mass number of 23? Well, 11 plus 12 will give me 23. So I know that there's 12 neutrons. And then the average atomic mass just comes from the bottom again, 22.9. Nine. So then we move to our last one, boron. Well, I just kind of gave that away, but boron uh, is the one that has the atomic number of 5. And so we look at this atomic number on the periodic table, match it up here, and we see that the symbol is B, and the element is boron. Since the atomic number is 5, we know that boron will have 5 protons, and since the atom is neutral, we know that the 5 protons are canceled out by 5 negative electrons. If there are 5 neutrons here, we want to find the mass number, which is protons plus neutrons, so 5 plus 5, which gives me 10, and then the average atomic mass we get from the bottom down here, so it's 10.811. And that's how we'd fill out one of these tables. I like these because they're kind of like a puzzle. You have these different parts, and you have to use what you know to figure out what's missing, so they're pretty neat. The last thing we kind of looked at was drawing actual models of these atoms. And what we had to do was use all that information we had before to put these together. So at the top, we have our first example of a helium atom. So a helium atom, this is a picture over here on the right of what that might look like. So this helium atom has an atomic number of two, which means that I should have two protons. So remember in the middle, the protons are represented by these little white specks. There's also two neutrons that are given here. The neutrons were also in the nucleus, but they were the darker colored specks in the nucleus. So we have two protons and two neutrons in the nucleus, so we draw them together in the middle. And then since I know that the atom has to be neutral, the two protons, which are positive, have to be offset or canceled out by two electrons, which are negative. So my electrons are out here. I have two of them out around, around the outside in the, the electron cloud. So if I was asked to draw a boron atom, I would do the same exact process. So I'd say, all right, boron's atomic number at the top is 5, so I know that it's going to have 5 protons. I'll just do a little plus sign for that. So what I'll do is I'll draw 5 little protons down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm also given that it has six neutrons, so I know the neutrons go in the nucleus with my protons, so I'll do those six neutrons. One, and I'll color them in. Two, three, four, five, and six. And so there's my six neutrons. So I have my nucleus all put together. I also know that since I have five positives that are protons, I need to have five negative electrons to cancel them out and make my atom neutral. So just like up here in our first little circle, 
we're only going to put two electrons. So I have one here and I have one over here. Then I'm going to draw another part of my cloud. Okay. And since I've put two in already, I still need three more. So I'll put one here, two, and three. And so now I see that I have five electrons. I have five neutrons. And I have five protons. And that's how we would put together a drawing of one of these atoms based on the information we can find in the periodic table.